Okay, so now that I have my preload on my pinion gear here, we're going to attempt to install the carrier unit. What I did was I put a little bit of, I'm using the spacers that were in the carrier before, uh, that were in the axle before, I should say. And I put a little gear oil around there to kind of give them to stick up in there. Now I'm going to try to install the carrier unit. This should be entertaining for you guys. And of course my shims backed out like immediately. So I've heard there's a tool called a shim pusher that you can put on here and push your shims in. Cause see, I got the carrier unit in, but my shims are kind of sticking out. So I think what I'm gonna try to do here is use a piece of wood or something, try to knock those in there. If these were thinner shims, I would not even try to do this cause these, you don't want to bend your shims all up, but these are kind of fat, so I'm going to roll with it. That is not doing anything. So I'm going to try to use this to gently tap them, ever so gently. Actually, this might be a tad better. So that one seems to be sliding in. Okay, this one does not seem to want to get in there. So I think I'm gonna have to pull the unit back out slightly to try to get this shim in there a little further. So now I've got my drive shaft bolted back up with two more little bolts. I can use my trick here from earlier. It's definitely not what you want to happen. Okay, let's try this again. Off to a great start. Let's see if I can get the shim up in there first. All right, so these keep wanting to fall out. Here's what I'm gonna try next. I'm gonna grab a little bit of grease here. Just kind of stick it up in that little area right here. I don't think that's gonna hurt anything, but maybe it'll help hold these things in there just a little bit. Give it just enough of stay power where they're not gonna fall out while I'm trying to stick my carrier unit in there. Again, I'm putting just a little bit just to give them a little more surface tension to hopefully just kind of stay there a bit instead of falling out. So I'm beginning to think that maybe these shims are a little bit too big because I cannot get this carrier in here. I've been trying for a little while and it's just not happening. So I think I'm gonna try to see if there's some shims just a little bit smaller than these to put in there. 
Okay, so what I did was I went back to my kit and I got some shims here that are a little bit, just gonna loosen stuff up in here just a hair. I used my calipers to make sure that I somewhat measured. I was just trying to compare, you know, the differences in thickness. And I didn't actually measure the difference in thickness, but what I did was just stack some of these up until they were a little thinner than what came out of here from the factory. So I'm gonna try to get this in here with these shims, see if that makes a difference. I know you want it to be nice and tight, but I couldn't even get it assembled. And here we go again. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. I may try to smear a little grease on these, try to hold everything together. So I'm just getting a little grease. I'm just gonna put just a little bit of grease on these. Try, try to get them to hold together a little bit. I think that slid in a little bit too easily, so I may have to get some shims a little thicker. Because that seemed to go in pretty easy. And you want the bearing preload to be nice and tight. Although it's not in yet, is it? So I can already tell that I have like zero backlash. I'll probably measure that just to see where we're at. I need to finish getting these shims in over here as well. So I may have to pull it out ever so slightly and then get it to uh, get those shims to go in on this side. Which looks like it might be easier said than done. That does seem to fit nice and tight with those shims there. Once the shims are pushed all the way in instead of hanging out a little bit. So that's pretty snug. I'm going to go ahead and me measure my backlash. So now given the fact that I pretty much have zero movement in my backlash, I'm pretty sure that I don't have enough. I'm going to take my gear pattern first. So I'm going to go ahead and put my, uh, see how deep my pinion is. Because you want to set that first before backlash, really. So let's go ahead and put my bearing caps back on. I'll torque these up. Now I'll try to see about getting a, a gear pattern here. And you want to torque these down fully, which is 80 foot pounds before trying to measure anything. Torque this down, 80 foot pounds again. Right then, so we're finally ready now. I've been working all day, by the way. Been out here since about 9 30, 10, and I don't even know what time it is. It's probably six o'clock in the afternoon. This is going to take you a while. I did stop for about, I don't know, two hours in the middle of the day. I had lunch. I had to go get some uh, bearings to make some setup bearings. I should have done that beforehand. People said to do that. 
I didn't, but learn from my mistake. So just to give you a heads up, this is probably gonna be a two-day project, at least it is for me. So now we're ready to paint some gears. All right, let's see how well this stuff spreads out. Well, it spreads pretty good. It's pretty thick stuff. So I'm gonna make sure I get really good coverage on a few teeth here. Just to give you an idea of what we're looking at, make sure you get full coverage on a few teeth. And then what you wanna do is give yourself a bit of resistance while turning the pinion gear on the other side. I did have to disconnect my drive shaft again, so this is gonna be a bunch of disconnecting and reconnecting that, obviously. And I'm gonna use uh, my air ratchet to spin this thing over. And then we'll get our pattern, see what we're looking like, see if we gotta adjust that pinion depth. Okay, let's see if that was sufficient. So I did get a pattern, it looks like, but a non-favorable one. Okay, that's a little better. So, it doesn't look too bad from that side, in my opinion. It's kind of centered, and it, it looks like it's in the middle of the tooth, so that doesn't look too bad. But on the other side, it looks like it's a little not so centered. So and I'm gonna have to look at the guide to see which side is the drive side and which side is the non-drive side. Again, this is my first time setting this up. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, I don't think. But I'm gonna look at the guide and see what it says about tooth patterns and stuff. And then I'm gonna decide whether or not I like that. So, taking a look at this, apparently this is the coast side that we can see here, and then this is the drive side. And looking at the Yukon Gear website, based off this here, you see how the gear pattern is more towards the center line, more towards the, uh, the axis? That says, according to them, that the pinion gear is too far in, so I have too many shims behind it. So that means all this stuff has to come out and I have to uh, reduce the shims on my pinion gear. So yeah, I'm gonna do that <laughs> and then we'll come back to take another pattern. Okay, so I did get tired of screwing around and I went and got the case spreader out and this actually helped quite a bit get it, getting everything in there. It helped me get uh, the bearings in there nice and tight but without having to beat the crap out of it with a hammer. So it did actually take a little hitting with the hammer to get it in, but um, I was able to get it in there and it's nice and tight when I relieved the pressure from the case spreader. So this thing definitely helped me out. I would recommend it. I'll put the uh, link in the description and everything where you can purchase this. But this is what I ended up with after a bit of messing around. Okay, so now you can see the gear pattern a little better when I'm using the flashlight from the camera. It's nice and centered, it looks good to me. That's the drive side. And the non-drive side, the coast side. But you can see everything's centered up pretty good. I think I like the way this is set up. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as is. I didn't actually end up changing the pinion depth. All I did was set my backlash up. And I think I'm at eight thousandths for the backlash. I'll double check it one more time. But um, I think this is looking pretty good. I'm not a professional here. This is my first time doing this. But I did get online and check some uh, pictures of what acceptable gear patterns look like. And according to what I'm looking at on yukongear.com, it is centered. I've got my backlash set up. So I think that's really all about the only thing, about the only thing I can do here. Because when the patterns are too far in or out, that's what you're going to adjust. But how far this is meshing down into the tooth, I think is set by the backlash. And since my backlash is in spec, I think I'm good here. So if this is completely jacked, put it in the comments and let me know. Um, by then I'll, I probably would have rebuilt it a second time at that point, but uh, I think I'm good here. So just a heads up, if you are going to use a case spreader, on a Dana 44, I looked up the spec, and you're not supposed to move it more than 15 thousandths of an inch. 
So the way you accomplish measuring that is take your dial indicator, zero it out, and then start spreading the case open. I got it pretty tight here and it only moved 10 thousandths of an inch. So we are good. We have not moved it more than 15 thousandths of an inch. But I just wanted to throw that caveat out there. Using one of these does make it a whole lot easier to get the new carrier in and uh, get a proper bearing preload on it. I know a lot of people online will say that you don't need it, but I'm telling you right now, it makes the job a whole lot easier instead of trying to beat the crap out of it with a dead blow hammer. Just my two cents. I think it's worth a hundred bucks on Amazon. Again, I'll put the link in the description for this thing if you decide to use it. Everyone, if you enjoyed today's video, I would invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below right there on the right hand corner. And if you felt that the products in today's video is something you'd might like to own yourself, there's a product link right up there to the right, upper right hand corner, or down in the description will be a product link for you to purchase the product as well. Thank you very much for watching YouTube.